It's February 22nd, 1910, and lightweight champion of the world, Battling Nelson, defends his title against the rugged challenger, Ad Wolgast. As round one gets underway, it's Battling Nelson, the taller fighter with back to camera, forcing the action. Nelson has been nicknamed the Durable Dane for his incomparable stamina. The challenger, Ad Wolgast, the shorter fighter on your left, got this chance at the world's lightweight championship by agreeing to a scheduled 45 round fight. Watch for a tremendous right by Nelson. Wolgast took that punch very well. Round one draws to a close with Nelson having a decided edge. Rounds two through six were all Nelson's. He battered Wallgas, landing solidly to the head and body. Here in round seven, Nelson, to your right, is still putting tremendous pressure on his shorter challenger. The longest battle that Walgas had ever been in prior to this championship contest was his 20-round decision four months ago over Lou Powell. Walgas had no alternative but to accept the 45-round terms which champion Nelson insisted upon. Round seven was another round for Nelson. In rounds eight through 13, Nelson remained in charge. Watch these punishing blows. Here's a hard right uppercut by Walgast, and four powerful rights to the head. Walgast is showing signs of coming on here in round 13. After 40 minutes of fighting, Walgast has finally taken a round from the champion. Rounds 15 through 18 were all Nelsons. Watch the champion pour it on here in round 19. Wolgast goes down from a murderous right to the head, but jumps to his feet after two seconds. Wolgast is really taking a beating. It's all Nelson now. He's smothering Wolgast with a blistering attack. Walgas finally lands two rights of his own. Nelson won the lightweight title two years ago when he defeated champion Joe Gans July 4th, 1908 in San Francisco. Nelson won by knocking out champion Gans in the 17th round. It's hard to believe that Walgas has survived 19 rounds of Nelson's best punches. From round 19 up to this point, it's still been all Nelson. The question in everybody's mind is how can Walgas take it? Walgast unbelievably seems to be coming out of it. There was a very real dislike between these two fighters, and as a result, both agreed to waive the no foul rule. The result of this agreement is that referee Eddie Smith definitely cannot stop the fight, regardless of the tactics used by either fighter. Low blows, butting, gouging, scuffing with the laces, and any other fouls can be used in this contest, 
with the fighter committing the foul completely free to continue if he feels his tactics are meeting with any degree. The boxing public envisioned one of the most vicious contests in fistic history. Rounds 24 and 25 were even, with Walgas once again showing signs of coming back. Nelson's nickname of the Durable Dane more appropriately fits the challenger in this fight. Nelson is 28 years old. Born in Copenhagen, Denmark in 1882, he had his first professional fight when he scored a first round knockout over Wallace Kidd in September of 1896. Walgas will land a hard right and a smashing uppercut. As incredible as it seems, the challenger is getting stronger. In rounds 27 through 29, to the amazement of the crowd, Walgast has a slight edge. Here in round 30, a distance amazingly of two modern-day championship fights, these Ironmen continue on with no let-up. The 22-year-old challenger, Ad Walgas, was born in Cadillac, Michigan in 1888. He's only five foot four and a half inches tall, giving away over three inches in height to Nelson. Walgas' record going into this contest was 73 professional fights with only one loss marked against him. Round 30 draws to an end. Round 31, Nelson won by a slight margin, but 32, 33, and 34 were all wall gas. The champion was definitely showing slight signs of slowing up. Wall gas kept pumping in hard blows relentlessly, while Nelson never gave up trying for a knockout. This is fantastic. These men have fought 34 three-minute rounds and just keep going. Walgas' only loss by the decision route came on July 12, 1906, to a fighter by the name of Young Nelson. Fans who believe in omens cringed at the thought that the only defeat on Walgas' record was to a fighter by the name of Nelson. At the end of round 35, challenger Walgas seems to be the stronger of the two. In rounds 36 through 38, Walgas confidently took over the role of boxer puncher. He landed by far the more effective head and body punches. Nelson is still in there, pressing forward, throwing punches, even after a fantastic total of 38 three-minute rounds. Four years ago, Nelson went 42 rounds the first time he fought Joe Gans. 
Nelson lost as a result of a low blow, but everyone was amazed that Nelson was able to sustain an attack without let up for such a long period of time. But in this fight, Nelson is taking on a man who has the equal of his own stamina, if not more. During the past 10 years, Nelson's opponents look like a who's who of the lightweight division. Such renowned fighters as Terry McGovern, A. Battelle, Jimmy Britt, and Young Corbett were but a few of the ring immortals who tried Nelson on for size, unsuccessfully. Watch this uppercut and left hook by Walgast. A jab and then two powerful rights by Walgast. A barrage of blistering punches. Referee Smith is showing concern for Nelson. He's out on his feet at the end of round 39. The referee has stepped in and stopped the fight. He feels that Nelson could be seriously injured if he permitted the contest to continue. And Walgast becomes the lightweight champion of the world, February 22nd, 1910.